final day of testimony in the trial of Derek Chauvin. It ended with him invoking his Fifth Amendment right not to testify. Closing arguments are now set to begin on Monday. I think if you've been watching this network and following the trial, uh, it's very hard to see how this man could be acquitted. And yet, let's remember the context here, right? First of all, these are jurors who are selected for not knowing much about the case or forming an opinion on it. And this was arguably the single most publicized news story in America last year. So, you know, if you're the kind of person who follows the news every day, it's hard to mentally model what's going through the minds of these 12 jurors whose perceptions may be easily influenced. Secondly, there is, of course, the history of police violence against unarmed black people recorded on camera that has not led to convictions. The most iconic example of this was 30 years ago, the trial of police officers who beat Rodney King. A black man whose car had been stopped by Los Angeles police officers was in the street. An apartment dweller across the street took the videotape after hearing the fracas going on. The amateur cameraman said it appeared to him the suspect was attempting to cooperate when the beating with nightsticks began. That moment is, I think, seared into everyone's minds who lived through it. It was one of the first moments where a bystander was able to capture what was happening. This kind of thing on videotape for all the world to see. And yet, those four L.A. police officers were acquitted. In 2014, here in New York, there was, of course, Eric Gardner. Cell phone camera captured now former police officer Daniel Pantaleo putting Garner in that chokehold. He was then swarmed by officers and fell to the ground, and Garner's final words were, I can't breathe. And yet, a grand jury declined to indict the officer. Didn't even go to trial. One year later, in 2015, there was the incredibly egregious case of Walter Scott in South Carolina. We covered that case. We were down in North Charleston. Uh, he was pulled over for a broken taillight. After a brief interaction, he, he ran. The officer put three bullets in his back. The killing was recorded on a cell phone. The officer, Michael Slager, was charged with murder. But a judge declared a mistrial because of a hung jury. Slager was eventually convicted on federal charges of second-degree murder. Those are just three examples. We could list a lot more. So no one should have any illusions about the outcome of this trial being in any way decided. David Henderson is a civil rights attorney, former prosecutor, has been following the trial throughout, and he joins me now. I guess first your thoughts on that note, uh, as someone who has practiced as a prosecutor and done criminal and civil defense, civil rights attorney, um, about the indeterminacy here. Well, Chris, from the examples you just mentioned, Walter Scott is the one that stands out as being the most applicable here, because I do see a possibility for a hung jury anytime you've got a police officer on trial. Yeah. The challenge with the other examples that you offered, which I agree with, is more along the lines of the fact that I don't know the prosecutors in those cases were fully committed to getting a conviction in the first place. Take Eric Garner's. Normally, the grand jury does whatever the prosecution tells them to do. The fact that they didn't even true bill him or indict him indicates me prosecutors were not committed to the case. Well, and that's what I mean, one thing that people have noted about the strength of this case from the prosecutorial standpoint is that you have the entire Minneapolis Police Department lined up behind the prosecutors and testifying, which people have noted as 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 uh, different than other cases like this they've seen. No, that's absolutely true. I think that does represent problems for this case in that the Minneapolis Police Department is not innocent. Derek Chauvin's guilty. That doesn't make the Minneapolis Police Department innocent. But that said, you have had police officers lining up to testify. We had a police chief come in and testify. And we had the best team of experts that I can ever remember seeing in a criminal case who testified on behalf of the side representing George Floyd and trying to convict Derek Chauvin. So if you add those things up and you combine them with the diversity on this jury, I'm not aware of a jury that was this diverse in a case where a police officer was exonerated for wrongfully killing an unarmed black man. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.